For many years, the Sunseeker 131 was the flagship of the fleet. When the naval architects were trying to figure out what would be the best boat for Sunseeker, they had three things that were really important to them, the speed, the volume, and comfort. In regards to speed, there aren't too many yachts that are this size, that look this good, that can achieve speeds of 23 knots. Sunseeker's solution for comfort was deep V, large stabilizers, at rest stabilization. That means that no matter where you're hanging out, wherever you're anchored, when you're not moving, you're still gonna be stabilized. The third point of focus is volume. The Acacia's got a volume of 338 GT. You've got three exterior decks, main deck, bridge deck, sun deck. All of those decks all have large volumes. Something very cool on this boat. There's also a garage on the bow, which is really nice because it extends your range. During today's walkthrough, we're gonna run into Captain Joe. Uh, one of the reasons that this runs so well is because of Captain Joe. He has many, many years of experience in the, in the commercial and the private yacht sector, and he brings a professional air to the program. One of the things that we've been doing is really trying to upgrade guest experience on board. From a water sports toy perspective, we have all fun air uh, inflatables. We have three docks. Typically, we run two of them at a time, one of being a pool. Acacia has five cabins with the capability of hosting 12 guests. The two lower guests have three-way conversions, meaning we can have kings, twins, or a pullman for three in those two cabins. This super yacht has a tri-deck configuration, which means that you have four levels. The lowest deck, which is the guest accommodations. The main deck, you've got an on-deck master cabin. Next deck, sky lounge, wheelhouse, and here we have the sun deck. Nicely laid out. You've got a beautiful bar on the starboard side, dining table on the port side for 10 guests. It can be broken down and configured to be more of a, a cocktail arrangement. Beautiful jacuzzi with a sun pad up on the forward part of the sun deck. Here on the aft side, we've got some settees for laying out in the sun, some storage, and a little, little canopy that comes out if you want some coverage from the sun as well. This deck is obviously a huge component for the, the charter operation that, that Acacia has. What a better place to hang out in the Bahamas, if you're an anchor, or you're, the, you're in the Caribbean, Mediterranean. This is just uh, overall a wonderful place to hang out and relax. One of the most important upgrades that we did recently is the full maritime Starlink. Over 200 megabytes per second down, which is what you'll be experiencing when you're at home. When we got clients on board who need to FaceTime, Zoom, or anything like that, you have uninterrupted service now. There's no throttling, there's no data cap or anything like that. So from our perspective, it's really transcended the industry. So one of the things you notice in the sun deck are the uh, retractable awnings. Uh, those, those are electric. Down here on the bridge deck, there's an other set of shades the captain just installed these, it was a brilliant idea. With having such an open aft area, I love how covered this forward part of the dining deck is. You've got a beautiful teak table. You can easily fit 12 people here. This TV, like all the other TVs on board, are tied into the Starlink system that's on board. You've got a nice sliding door here. You can open up so that there's only one section open or push it all the way over what you see here right now. I love the interior of the Acacia. Um, here in the Sky Lounge, dark wood, dark floors, it just has a really warm feel to it. Starting over here on the starboard side, you've got a massive leather sofa. This makes you want to hang out and relax and, and watch a movie. Over here, you've obviously got a TV that's gonna be tied into the Starlink. And over here on the port side, you find a large bar. This bar is not only important for servicing this area right here, but it's also really important for servicing the uh, dining deck right there on the bridge deck. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a cocktail party or a lot of people hanging out back there, fully supported bar right here. We've got a nice uh, card table here, hang out, play some cards, relax, and forward to that, we've got a full day ahead. Leading forward into the bridge deck foyer, uh, we've got a high capacity wine refrigerator right here and a dedicated stewardess pantry that is critical to the uh, ease of service throughout this whole deck. Inboard, we find a winding staircase that leads all the way down to the main deck and forward from here, we've got access into the wheelhouse. From a captain's perspective, here's why I really like this bridge layout. It has five Hatlin screens. They are fully integrated, so we have the ability to cycle through uh, inputs on each screen. 
currently we have it set up as the AMS system. You can cycle through your daily operations where you can adjust some trim tabs that the vessel has, turn on your fire pumps, bilge pumps. We also have zero speed stabilizers on here. We have two large fins set up. We transit through a lot of shallow water, so the boat is set up with two transducers. The vessel currently runs with nine crew, three on deck, three interior, plus engineer, chef, captain. Eight live downstairs. They're all double bunks with their own bathrooms, and that's tied into the crew lounge. And then my cabin is on the bridge deck here, just after the wheelhouse. Any well-built boat is built to class. This vessel is built to Rena. We've spent a lot of time over the last year getting flag and class back in sequence. Therefore, any charter operation moving forward is able to achieve all your annuals within a month time frame, as opposed to spreading it out over a period of time. One of the most distinct features of the Sunseeker 131 is the Portuguese deck, which is part of a two-tiered bow. This raised portion here, just forward of the wheelhouse, has a beautiful, huge sun pad. One of the really nice uh, options that you have up here are four huge Sony and speakers. It's also a nice place to hang out when you're at anchor, if you want to get a little separation from the people that are up on the uh, sun deck and aft deck, it's just a place to be alone, to hang out and relax. Working your way forward, it'll take you down to the fore deck, which is going to have the anchors and the fore peak. The lower portion of the foredeck is where you're gonna find the, the ground tackle. You've got your two muir windlasses, so all of your fenders and lines down below or just even in this area right here. Up until last year, one of the areas that was misused on the boat was this foredeck garage. In the last year, Captain Joe has uh, really made a lot better use of this space by installing three uh, chest freezers. You can have 10, 12 guests on board, seven, 10 days, which is really important on a, on a yacht this size. You do want to get off the beaten path. You want to be able to have plenty of frozen food on board. That's now possible. One of the most dynamic areas is the swim platform. It can be used as a beach club in the, in the current setting that you see here. It's also easy access to the garage. Working your way over here to the port side, you're gonna see how easy it is to gain access to a center console if you tow one. Right now, you're gonna find a 35 Scout. This one's not included in the sale of this vessel, but you can get a really good idea of how easy it is to get on and off the boat right here. If you're an early riser and you wanna come out and maybe go for an early morning swim, it's a great area to hang out right here. Just stewardesses can bring you a coffee, the chef can put together a nice breakfast for you or something. It's a really open area. You're close to the water, it's very relaxing. Transitioning from the aft deck into the main salon, we've got these beautiful double doors. Once you're in this area here, you've got two mirrors on each side, you've got really nice storage, and just forward is the main living area. The current owners made a lot of changes when they, when they purchased the vessel. All the carpeting was replaced on the boat, on the lower deck, main deck, and upper deck. In here, I'd like to point out that all of the white chairs and the, and the white sofas and all the leather panels and all the light fixtures have all been replaced. The formal dining area is a very cozy environment. Part of what makes it feel so cozy is the combination of the natural light, the walnut interior, and a very large dining table. It's easy to serve. Something else that makes this area have a nice flow is that forward of here, you've got a, a really nice pantry. Pantry's got a brand new refrigerator, and forward of that, you've got a large galley. Large island, lots of refrigeration, two ovens to give your chef everything he needs to prepare a fantastic meal for 10 to 12 guests. As we get to the end of our time on board Acacia, we find ourselves here in the main foyer. Down here we've got stairs leading down into the guest accommodations. These are the stairs leading up to the Sky Lounge and the wheelhouse. To starboard we've got a day head. To port we've got the galley and access down into the crew accommodations. And through here, we have the entrance to the master cabin. Out of all of the Sunseeker 131s that are currently on the market, and I've seen them all, the Acacia has the best master cabin layout. There's many reasons why this layout is so well done. One, you've got a couple different nice seating areas, bed sitting right midships, great visibility, and TV facing forward. That's actually something that a lot of people don't understand. It's a lot better to be looking forward than looking aft when you're laying in the bed. Something else that's nice is that you've got easy access down into the master head, which is very well laid out. We wrap up today's walkthrough 
here on the lower deck, this is the guest accommodations. After me, we've got two staterooms. They're both queen staterooms. Forward of me, we've got two convertible cabins. When they're separated, you have two twins. When they're pushed together, you've got two full-size king beds, one in each stateroom. And you've got a Pullman bed that folds down from the wall on each side, allowing you to sleep three in those staterooms. The theme in these staterooms down here is space. All four of these staterooms all have big volume. When you're inside the cabins, you don't feel cramped at all. You feel like you've got lots of room to walk around, feel comfortable. You might even want to kick back and watch a movie on a uh, rainy day or something. The name Acacia comes from the Acacia tree. The tree is a symbol of strength and longevity. Like the tree, the yacht Acacia has been designed and maintained to stand the test of time. I am David Johnson. What a pleasure to be down in the Florida Keys to do today's walkthrough on the uh, Yacht Acacia. Uh, it's been a pleasure spending this time with you. Please give me a call, email me if you have any questions.